Hey there, welcome to this video which is going to explain to you the rules of Fantasy Battles the Ninth Age in less than 30 minutes. Um, it's a game with quite a hefty rulebook, but there's no need to read the entire rulebook because this video will provide you with everything that you need to get started basically with the game. Um, we're going to play with some really basic rules and then all the special rules go out of the window and you can expand um, with the special rules yourself basically by just uh, including them as you learn the game. For the first battles that you will play, um, I would say that you can be quite free in what you put on the table and also um, I would advise you to play the frontline class scenario as this is the easiest to uh, just get stuff going. Uh, for this video we will be using Dread Elves and Empire of Sunstyle. Uh, the Dread Elves will be bringing 5 Dread Knights and the Hydra and the Empire of Sunstyle will bring 10 light infantry with handguns um, that hit on a 4+. plus. This is included in the profile of the handgun of the unit entry. Um, then a marshal on a horse and 20 infantry with a standard. Then once again for the Dread Elves we have the Dread Knights and the Hydra. And for the Empire of Sunstyle we have the light infantry with handguns. We have the marshal on horse and we have the heavy infantry unit. Um, normally both players would roll a die and the highest roll would get to deploy something first. There's some alternative rules to this um, in terms of deploying, but for now you can just remember that the highest roll gets to drop a unit and then you alternate dropping units. So for the Dread Elves we roll a 3 and for the Empire of Sun style we roll a 3 as well. If you roll a die you just roll again. Uh, Dread Elves has a 2 and the Empire of Sun style has a 4, so they have to deploy first. They deploy, for example, the Light Infantry in the Deployment Zone, followed by the Dread Elves with their Hydra. This is just to give an example of how deployment could work. Then we have the Heavy Infantry and the Dread Knights for the Dread, Dread Elves, and then the Marshal for the Empire of Sunstyle. As the Dread Elves manage to finish their deployment first, they get the amount of units that has not been deployed on the Empire of Sunstyle side as a bonus. To their role to start the game or to decide whether they want to start the game so in this case only the marshal was left on the empire of sun style side so that means that the dread elves get a plus one on their role to start the dread elves they roll a one plus one is going to be a two and then the empire rolls a six so the empire actually gets to start uh, the empire doesn't really want to do a lot other than to shoot with its handgunners if they are within range for this you check the range of the weapon which would be 24 inches. I don't know if it's really clear on the camera but my 12 inches is over here and my 24 inches is over here. So then we are going to shoot with the handgunners. We already saw that they were in range of their weapon at 24 inches. It is however more than half their range which is 12 inches so they do get a minus one penalty to hit here. Normally the handguns would hit on a four plus. This would mean that now with the minus one to hit they would hit on a five plus. We'll see how many hits we get. This is going to be, oh this is cocked. This is going to be three hits. So I take the fives and the sixes here because I need a five or higher to score a hit. The Dread Knights have resilience three. I have a weapon with strength four. So I wound them on a three plus. And I don't actually do any wounds at all. Um, after this we still have the armor saves. Um, but we'll see that in the next round probably. Um, Otherwise, well, the Empire of Sunstyle didn't really want to move because they have the range gain in this scenario. So then it's on to the Dread Elves. The Dread Elves, they could issue a charge if they are within their move uh, allowance plus 12 inches. Because once you declare a charge, you normally get two dice to add um, in terms of movement to your uh, charge move. The Dread Knights, they have a move allowance of 7. 7 plus a max of 12 would mean that they could declare a charge at 19 inches. Uh, this is quite far for them. Um, I would say that the uh, handgunners at this moment would be within 18 inches. So I need an 11 in order to make it. Um, there's one small rule that I would <laughs> force you to play with in terms of special rules. And that is that cavalry and beasts, they get... Three dice on the charge and they take the highest two. So if I, for example, roll for my charge this result, a th five, a three and a six, I would discard the three and I would keep the five and six and get a total charge of 11 plus the move allowance of my monster or cavalry model. 
Um, well, we're not going to charge for now. So we will just move up with the Dread Knights, just to give an idea of what they can do. Um, so they go up 9 inches. This is more than their movement allowance, I can march with them. As long as I don't um, do any uh, reforms or any very special maneuvers, then um, I can just move quite freely. The only maneuver that a unit can do is a wheel. And single models, they can pivot. Uh, if I were to wheel with this unit, I already moved 9 inches. I still have 5 inches left to go. So I could wheel 3 inches, for example, and then turn in to the rest of the battlefield. The Hydra can do, well, he can pivot as much as he wants. And pivoting is basically just turning on the spot. So I can move in any direction, um, which is quite an advantage of single models. He has a march allowance of 12 inches, so he can first, for example, go 2 inches this way if he wants to. Then he can pivot, then he can 8 inches this way, then I did move a total of 10 inches. If you go directly it's a bit shorter, but just for the purposes of explaining, explaining I will do this. Um, I can go another 2 inches, and then I can still pivot at the end if I want. We have some Dread Elves closing in on our location, so it would be advisable to... to Try to get uh, rid of them, basically. The handgunners could try to force a panic check um, on the Dread Knights. And here, these combined units could maybe uh, tackle the Hydra. If we look at the Hydra, it has a front side and a... Um, well, a side. <laughs> so it has a front arc and a, and a side arc. If we extend this line, then you can see that the... Cavalry model of the Empire of Sun style is in its front and the um, heavy infantry unit is in the side of the Hydra because basically you extend this line and if you're within this area with your front arc of your unit you're in the flank and if you're in the front side of that arc then you're in the front of the target. Um, so I could declare charges with both this guy and with the heavy infantry. So as I said, for a cavalry model we get 3 dice and we take the 2 highest, and for infantry we get 2 dice. And we just keep them both. And we add to that the advanced move of our units. This is something you do before the rest of the movement in your army, um, and then afterwards you can move freely with any other units you want to move. The marshal on the steed has a movement allowance of 7. Um, he needs a 9 to get in, so actually it's automatic, but you can still roll just for the style of it. I would have gotten a 2, a 6 and a 4. I discarded 2 because I have Swift Stride Special Rule. So I keep the 10 and I come to a total of 17, which makes my charge very viable. Then the Heavy Infantry have a movement allowance of 4. They are actually just in 9 inches. So they need a 5 or higher on the dice. They actually only managed to get a 3, which means that they have a failed charge in this scenario. In that scenario you take the highest of the 2 dice. So in this case I had a 2 and a 1. They take the 2, they make a wheel towards the target. And then if they have any movement left, they just go straight forward with that. This means that the marshal goes in on his own. And we will see how well he's going to fare against the Hydra. It would probably have been better with the heavy infantry support, but... You don't always get what you want. Um, then we go to the rest of the movement. Um, well, the unit that has charged but failed to charge cannot move anymore now. Um, because, well, they tried to charge and they're too busy with that. The unit of handgunners could still move. However, they're in a quite decent position in order to just shoot at their target. In this case, the target is within 12 inches of my handgunners. So I can just shoot with my 10 shots. Because I can shoot two ranks deep, I didn't explain that earlier. Um, but I can shoot with my 10 shots and I hit on 4+, plus because my target is within the half range of my weapon. So I hit on 4+, plus. I actually score quite a lot of hits, 6 hits. Once again I have strength 4 against resilience 3, so I wound on 3+, plus, and I score 4 wounds. The 4 wounds... Um, they have armor penetration 2 because that's a trait of the handgun. Um, the Dread Knights have a 2 of armor save uh, following from armor 5. So if you have armor 5, you need to roll a 2 or higher on the dice in order to make your armor save and ignore the wound. 
If I have armor penetration 2 with a handgun rest, it means that uh, you actually deduce 2 from this. So I need a 4 plus instead of a 2 plus in order to pass my armor roll. We'll see how many knights we manage to save. So I have a 2, a 3, a 4, and a 5, which means that the 4 plus I managed to save 2, and I have 2 knights that are gonna, however, unluckily be killed. Um, as this is 25% of the unit or more, I'm gonna have to take a panic test. Uh, for this, you need to look at your discipline uh, characteristic. Dread Knights have a discipline of 9. If I roll a 9 or lower on two dice, then I'm fine and nothing happens. Otherwise, I panic away from the shooting. I have an 11, and an 11 is unfortunately way too high. Um, so this is higher than the 9 that I have. So in this case, my Dread Knights, they flee away directly from the, um, from the unit that caused uh, the flee. So I align my center of my unit with the center of the unit that caused my panic test. If there's not really a unit that is responsible for the panic test, um, because normally also units within six inches of um, a unit that breaks from combat, for example, has to test, um, then you just flee away from the nearest enemy. However, in this case, there is a clear source of the, uh, of the panic. Um, once again, we go back to the rule where uh, normally you would roll 2d6 to see how far you go. In this case, you go 3d6 because I have cavalry and I take the two highest. Um, but unlike for charges, when you're fleeing and when you're uh, pursuing, so going after people that break from combat and flee away, then you just roll your um, your swift stride or your normal um, advance uh, rate, and you don't add the um, the movement characteristic of your models. Whereas with charges, you would. So in this case, I'm fleeing away, I'm rolling three dice because I'm cavalry, I take the two highest and I go seven inches away from the horrific hangars. Then we go to the combat. Um, so I'm going to ignore a lot of rules here because monsters usually have quite a lot of rules. Um, if you are in combat, you look first uh, at agility. Um, whoever has the highest agility gets to strike first. We're just going to look at stats here, no other special rules at all. So the Marshal has three attacks. He has offensive skill five against the defensive skill four of the Hydra. That is one higher than my target. I hit him on three plus. These are tables that you can find back in the rulebook. They're quite easy to find, so I'm not going to go through the entire process there. Three plus to hit for the Marshal. Normally you would equip him with a weapon, but we're just going for stats. So I have strength 4 um, against resilience 5 of the Hydra. I need 5 plus in order to wound him. I wound him once for the 6th. Um, and the Marshal has AP1 in his profile. So my armor of my Hydra, which is normally a 4 up, goes to a 5 up because of the armor penetration of the Marshal. I roll a 5 and I manage to make my save with the Hydra. The horse of the, of the marshal can also still strike. It uh, has offensive 3 against offen defensive 4, so it needs a 4 up. Strength 3 against resilience 5 needs a 6, doesn't get a 6. And then the hydra is going to strike back. It has 5 attacks normally. Offensive 4 against defensive 5, so I need force. And then I have strength 5 against resilience 4, so I need 3 plus. These are things that over time you get accustomed to and then you get to know them by heart basically. As we didn't give the Marshal anything except for his standard equipment, he has a shield and he has uh, plate armor as it's in the rule book. And then he is on a horse that is also quite heavily armored. So he actually goes to a one-up armor save. I have armor penetration 2, so after my armor penetration we go to a 3-up armor save meaning that I have to roll a 3 or higher on all of my dice in order to prevent all of the wounds. And for every one that I do not make, I get a wound. And luckily I managed to roll a 1, a 2, a 5 and a 6. The 5 and 6 are good. Uh, that means that there's no wound going on to the marshal. The 1 and the 2 are not good, however, so that means that I'm going to take 2 wounds on my marshal. 
Uh, you can mark this in different ways. People use, for example, tokens um, that you can drag along with your uh, models. You can also use special dice to indicate uh, the wounds. Uh, I've also seen people using rubber bands that you um, actually adhere a bit more sturdy to the model. And I think that is maybe the best uh, method because then you also don't get confused with other dice and they cannot tilt over or uh, stuff like that. Um, after that, everything in combat has struck. So we're going to calculate the combat resolution. Um, so there's also a lot of, uh, well, there's one table with all the different combat resolution um, modifiers in the, in the rulebook that is quite easy to find. So for now, in this situation, the marshal has charged, which gives him one combat resolution. There's no banners involved, there's no ranks involved, nobody got charged in the flank or the rear of, or any of these things. So it's only the wounds that count. The marshal didn't, didn't do any wounds, so on his side we only have his charge. The hydra did one wound to the marshal and he did another wound to the marshal. So these two, they even out, and that means that the hydra wins by one. Uh, if the Hydra wins by one, that means that the Marshal has to take a Discipline check at Discipline 9, minus the Combat Rest that was excessive, so minus one in this case, because the Hydra won the Combat by one, as we said. So I go from a 9 to an 8, and I do make my test on an 8. This means that we're locked in combat, nothing can move here. Um, you could have other units that join the combat, and then, um, well, charge in, basically. So we will continue now with the Dread Elf turn again. Uh, the Dread Elves cannot charge anything because everything is locked in combat or fleeing. Um, after you declare charges that you do, you try to rally your fleeing units. In this case, we have the Dread Knights that are fleeing. I roll their discipline and I check, um, or well, I roll two dice and I check it against their discipline. If it's equal or lower than their discipline stat, the unit will rally. I roll 9, the Dread Knights have Discipline 9, so that is equal, which is fine. So the unit can reform. So basically, in most scenarios, you would say that you can just turn around and they're fit to fight again. However, this turn, they cannot do anything. Um, the Dread Elves don't have anything else to do, so we continue with the fight. We go back to the agility. So the Marshal has the highest agility. He has three attacks. He hits the Hydra on 3 plus with offensive 5 against 4. Then he wounds it on 5 plus with strength 4 against resilience 5. He wounds twice. I have armor penetration 1, so the Hydra goes from a 4 up save to a 5 up save. Normally a Hydra would also still have a regeneration save, however we're just going to ignore it for now. And we are going to give him 1 wound. Then we still have the horse of the marshal. The horse strikes at agility 3, which is higher than the agility of the hydra, which is 2. So it misses with a 1. And then we have the hydra with 5 attacks. It has offensive 4 against defensive 5. So it has 3 hits because I need 4 plus. And then with strength 5 against resilience 4, I need 3 plus, which is another 3 wounds. We once again have the one up armor save of the marshal becoming a three up armor save. And that is not good enough because we have one two, which means that the marshal actually dies. As a consequence, he is removed from the field. Everything within six inches of the marshal has to take a panic check, but that is up till here. So none of the units that I had were actually within six inches. So everything is basically fine. After this combat, the Hydra is allowed to do a reform. So it can basically pivot in the direction that it wants to. And we will go to the Empire of Sunstall style turn again. We'll just assume that the heavy infantry is still in the side of the Hydra. Uh, we can pivot it a bit in order to have some space. Um, the heavy infantry are going to charge again. So they have their movement allowance of 4. 4 plus 2d6 because they are not cavalry. So they don't get to, to roll the extra dice and discard the lowest. 7 plus 4 is an 11, and I do make the charge because my 11 extends up till here. So with these charges, the only thing I have to check is whether my target is in my uh, front arc, in the sense that I can see it, that I can make the move in order to get there, and that I am within my range. 
Um, so even if only a tiny corner is within range, then it, it's just a legal charge. Um, what is important, however, for charges is that you also maximize the charge, which means that you try to make as many models in combat uh, as possible. And for the heavy infantry, this would be my full front rank. Um, and in combat, you have two ranks deep that can strike. So I would have a total of 10 attacks in this scenario against the Hydra. Um, otherwise, the heavy infantry are going to shoot again. Once again, I have 10 shots. Uh, the knights are a bit further away, uh, so they are more than 12 inches away. Because the 12 inch mark lies over here. Um, so I'm not going to hit on a 4 plus, I'm going to instead hit on a 5 plus. Which gives me an incredible 6 hits, once again. Because I rolled a lot of 6's actually. Uh, strength 4 against resilience 3 makes for a 3 plus. Which is another 5 wounds to the unit. We were talking already about the 2 plus armor save of the Dread Knights becoming a 4 plus armor save. Because of the AP of the handguns. I managed to inflict 3 wounds. And that is actually the entire unit gone. Then we go to the close combat with the heavy infantry. Um, so we were just saying that we ignore any of the special rules that these models have. Uh, normally you would have to factor in uh, fear, terror and thunderstorm most notably for such things as a hydra. Uh, also regeneration is a big one for monsters usually and breath attacks are also quite important. Um, I would say that normally this is a matchup that you really don't want to do with a heavy infantry support block. Ignoring all these special rules, the infantry gets a bit stronger. So we do have 10 attacks because the first two ranks of my unit can strike. I have offensive 3 against defensive 4, so I hit on 4 plus. And I have strength 3 against resilience 5, which means that I wound on a 6 plus. I don't do any wounds. Um, but that is, that is actually quite fine. Uh, the Hydra is going to strike back with his 5 attacks. Um, so he hits me uh, with a higher offensive skill 4 against defensive 3 on 3+. Plus. And he has strength 5, so he actually wins me on a 2+. Plus. Which means I am going to take 5 wounds. Normally I would still have armor. Um, I have light armor and a shield. However, because the Hydra has AP2, so armor penetration 2, my 5 up armor save gets um, increased to a 7 plus armor save and you cannot make those. We're going to count the combat resolution. So I have a charge, I have a flank. As I have a rank in my unit, one full rank at least, I have a big flank. So I'll just count it like this because then it's clearer. Um, so we have the charge, we have the flank, we have the big flank. I do have in my unit two full ranks after my first rank. So this first rank does not count uh, for combat resolution. Every first, every full rank after the first rank, so these two ranks, they count as a point for combat resolution. For normal infantry, um, if you have five models or more, it counts as a full rank. If you have six models, it also counts seven models as well. Um, but if you go to four models or lower, then you don't count the combat rest anymore for that rank. So I have five, um, being the charge, the flank, the big flank, and the two ranks. If I would have a standard, I would add a sixth one. This is also a combat uh, unit upgrade, such as the champion. Um, so we'll assume I have a standard so that we can see what happens if the Hydra loses combat. Because <laughs> the Hydra did five wounds. One, two, three. Four, one, one extra one. We can take this away, take this away, take this away, this way, and this way. In this scenario, Empire wins by one, so the Hydra has to take a test with a minus one modifier. He has discipline eight, becomes discipline seven. I have a seven on the roll, uh, which is equal to or lower than my discipline, so I am fine. I'm not gonna go anywhere. I think that is. Basically what you need to know in order to play nine days in a very basic level. You might have noticed that we still ignored a lot of rules uh, in this introduction. Um, however, I would advise you to just take it easy and um, introduce these rules as you get started with the game. 
Um, and there's no one who is forcing you to play with the uh, full package of the rules until you go to tournaments. Um, also, I included in this video uh, the most useful tables from the book. And these are the tables that we used uh, during the video. There's also still a table that um, indicates how well you did in the battle based on the victory points that you and your opponent lost. So if you manage to de completely destroy your opponent, obviously you have a big win. Um, if you did something else, then uh, you can calculate your win based on the, uh, the point cost of your units. Well, with that, I wish you the best of luck in the world of 9th Age Fantasy Battles, and I hope to see you again.